How we doing? How we doing? Are we awake? All right. Okay, here's the screen. Uh, my name is Jonathan Belik, 25-year-old from Jerusalem, Israeli. I currently study Middle East Islam and business administration, but I study at the Hebrew University, which is in the eastern side. So Hibba told you a bit about Jerusalem, and I'm sure you know things aren't so easy. So when I go to university, there's not so much interaction between the Jews and the Arabs. And this is something that bothers me, bothers Hibba, and bothers other people as well. So what I decided to do was create a team. If you look up above, you'll see a picture of a team. The AFL, Jerusalem Peace Team. What is AFL? AFL is Australian Football League. How many of you know what this sport is? Raise your hand. All right. I see five. So I'll try and extend, expand it a little more. Basically, Australian football, for those who don't know, is a combination of lots of sports. It's like volleyball. All right, you can, you can hand pass the ball. You can bounce the ball like basketball. You kick it, you tackle. It even has goals like in Harry Potter, like Quidditch. All right? It's everything. So what I did was I helped create this team. Now, if you look at the faces, this picture was taken just this Saturday in Croatia. My team and I participated in the AFL Access European Cup. And the faces that you see here, thank you. The faces that you see here include smiling, excitement, pride. Now, you wouldn't expect that if I was to tell you that this team lost four of their four games consecutively <laughs> and ended bottom of the competition, right? But if you look deeper into their faces, you'll see that those smiles, that pride is, is coming from somewhere else. It's coming from their courage. It's coming from their from their unity of playing together. Seven Palestinians and seven Israelis, all from Jerusalem, who would not interact if there was no team like this from both sides of the border, managed to do it together and fight for life. <laughs> so it was important for me to show you this photo very quickly. All right, oh, I wanted to go back, Never mind. At the end of this experience, I asked the boys to share with me some of their reflections about their experience, okay? It's not a normal experience and I'm sure they had feelings. One of the players, Adam, shared with me the following. He said, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate and hate leads to suffering. This dark side is nothing of, of what we want. And with this yellow bright ball, our intention is to avoid any darkness. So I told you a little bit about footy, now I'm going to tell you about the values. And I want you to pay attention because if these values were to be emulated by our national leaders, our conflict would be over so quickly. Communication on the footy field is essential, being loud, speaking to each other, shouting each other's names. Cooperation, you cannot do it by yourself. You have to rely on your friend, your teammate. Courage, we're the lions. Lions are courageous. It's about putting yourself on the line for your teammate. Having a Palestinian shepherd an Israeli and say, I got you, I got you, is something un unheard of. And seeing it live is something that it just, it just stays with you and it's something that you must share and they must share and they will. Trust, trusting the other side. We're losing trust. Humans are losing trust in each other, and it's all about that and respect. All right, these values, I know that most of us share these values, that's why we're here. But if we can take it one step further and share it with the people around us back home, to my national leaders, to their national leaders, things will change quickly. So the values are great, the idea is great. The reason of starting footy and why it is so unique is the following. First of all, it's a real sport, right? So soccer, you have Lionel Messi, you have Cristiano Ronaldo, you have these players who carry their whole team. In Australian football, you don't have that. Everyone is playing for each other, and if one screws up, the team loses. That's not the reason why we lost, we just didn't have enough skill. <laughs> okay, and neutrality. Bringing a game that is unknown to everyone is unheard of. 
everyone starting at the same spot and moving together and growing is incredible. It is absolutely incredible to see how Palestinians and Israelis, no inferiority, no one's su supreme over the other, they work together to grow. All right? And with all that I've just said, it's about transforming the seeds of peace that Hebe and I work at and with those kids who are seeds into grassroots, right? So change. Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in this world. We're all here because we want to see a change. But telling the kids, they're not kids, they're actually students my age, but telling the people, my teammates, that they need to be the change. There's no more waiting around another 67 years, another 2,000 years. Millions of people being killed. Enough is enough. You got to stand up. I stood up and I had a team to stand up with me. <laughs> Finding a goal. We all know that humans need a goal. So we targeted the AFL Exodus Cup that we just participated in. And Palestinians were able to move outside their comfort zone. And Israelis were able to move outside their comfort zone to the stretch zone where everyone works together. And together with this goal, we were able to move forwards. Now nurturing, you got to nurture your seeds. So you take those values that we just spoke of and you spread them around and some beautiful things will happen. But it's not just that, it's about talking the talk. But what does that mean? It's not about, hey, what did you eat last night? What movie did you see? It's about creating a safe space, a secure space for Palestinians and Israelis to share their fears, to share their stories, to share their traumas. We're carrying a lot of shit. There's a lot happening back home, and we need to be able to express these thoughts and feelings. So we have professional facilitators there with us who let us do it. But talking the talk isn't enough. You also got to walk the walk. Okay? Walking the walk is what we just did as one unified team playing against massive teams. Denmark, Holland, Norway. Big Vikings. I really miss. <laughs> big, big Vikings. But we're, when we're unified, it doesn't matter what your size is, it's about the size of your heart. And we hit those boys hard. And we hit them hard together, and we gained so much respect from the other nations. We had Irishmen, I don't know what's their deal, but they took their shoes off, and they were singing this jingle, take your shoes off for the peace team. Like tens of them. I don't know if it was the beer or their smelly feet, but there was Elf. <laughs> All right. Last but not least is follow-up. So I've, I've participated in the peace team in 2008 and 11 in the World Cup in Australia. But this is about our creation, not people from Australia, not these big donors. It's about us creating something from the bottom. And what we lacked was follow-up. We never kept going. It was like, yay, we were in the World Championships and there was nothing else. But now, 14 young men are waiting in Jerusalem for the first week of November to keep going. And that's what it's about. Keeping going and not letting this dream finish. This is the last slide. And I want to share with you, first of all, I'm going to call for action now, okay? So my call for action from you guys, I reckon there's about 1,500 people here. We all have smartphones and we mostly have Facebook. So we have a Facebook page. Right now it has 379 likes and that's not enough if we want to spread our word. So as I'm speaking, pull out your iPhones or your Samsungs or your HTCs or whatever they just invented. Log on to Facebook, AFL Peace Team on the bottom. Give us a like and you'll be with us for the continuation of our journey. All right, that's one thing. But I want to share with you our motto, the motto that was with us throughout the competition. It's possible to change the world. Future isn't destiny. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting for things to happen and nothing happens. We need to make a stand. We will change the future and we won't leave it up to destiny. I thank you for listening to me. I thank you for the support. I have, wait, I have two balls here. I want to give one to a Palestinian youth and one to an Israeli youth in the crowd. Find me after. This is, this is for you, okay? Thank you so much.